Well, hello, 8th graders. It's Mr. Dale here. And uh, let's take a look at the next unit that we're going to study in computer applications. The next unit is Microsoft Word. But before we jump into the unit, it's always good to look at the objectives for the unit. So let's take a look at them now. We want to be able to create very professional looking and reading Microsoft Word documents. We want to use our margins and the ruler and tab functions correctly. And we're going to look at some referencing tools such as bibliography and works cited form. And those are tools that are within Microsoft Mac 2011. We're going to use headings and subheadings correctly and we're going to connect them to a table of contents. We want to be, uh, work with basic editing functions, uh, use page breaks when possible. And finally, we'll look at reviewing our work and tracking the changes uh, within our job or our work. Let's take a look at Microsoft Word Mac 2011. The interface is quite a bit different than a PC interface if you have used Word in, with a PC. We call this area the ribbon. And within the ribbon, we have different tabs for accessing different functions or options within Word. Uh, we'll be using the document elements tab frequently to be working with our headings and subheadings. Uh, we'll be looking at headers and footers, page numbers, and so on. So you want to be able to understand where to go to find functions within Word. Uh, of course, we have the Home tab where you will find uh, all the icons you are familiar with for text editing and so on. Uh, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is that within Word and many of the other apps, uh, there is a toolbar available at the very top of the screen. Many of these tabs um, offer essentially duplicate options that you would find within the tab within Word, uh, but they are there for your uh, availability and ease. Uh, the one I do want to talk to you about right now is the save option. A lot of students will want to click here to save their work. Uh, let's not do that. Instead, we'll go up here to the file option and we'll click on save as. That gives us the option to add our name to the document so that we can find it if we are working on it at a later date. We can save to the desktop or even to documents um, wherever we prefer. So that is a quick look at the unit and the objectives. We also took a very quick look at the interface and some basic uh, interface icons that we'll be working with. I'm excited to get into this unit and uh, I hope we all have a great time. All right, now that we've looked at the objectives and basic user interface for Microsoft Word, uh, let's take a look at more specifics. We'll begin by looking at margins. Margins are these blued out areas you see around the document. Margins indicate where there will not be text typed. You can obviously change margin settings by clicking and dragging, for example, the top margin up or down. If you want more specifics, you can actually click the option key of your keyboard, then click on the margin, and then you'll see those numbers come up so that you can find out uh, the spacing of your margin. Tabs we looked at last week, and uh, we can preset the tabs by clicking on this tab marking here and clicking on left tab, we'll put a left tab here, for example, a center tab in the middle of the document somewhere, and a right tab on the right side of the document. Anytime you want to change the tabs, you can actually click on them and move them around. This is great if you're using columns or if you're setting up a, a directory in your Word document that involves columns and aligning them properly. So those are tabs. When you want to delete or get rid of a tab, click on it and drag it off the ruler. So I'll get rid of these tabs and pull them off. Let's take a look at this ruler. A lot of students find this very confusing, but it's not really that confusing. I'm actually going to grab some example text and I'm going to go to a lorem ipsum generator and grab some free example text here. Command C for copy. And I'll put that into our document for an example. If I imagine that this is a paragraph, um, and I put my cursor anywhere in the paragraph, if I click on this top triangle, it will only move the first line of the paragraph. However, if I put the cursor anywhere in the paragraph and I click right on this bottom triangle, it will move any of the lines below the first line over. 
Now, this is really handy for working with bullets, uh, working with bibliography, and often for quoting large sections of text. So let's review. The top triangle indents the first line of the paragraph, the bottom line indents the bottom lines of the paragraphs, and the bottom square indents everything at the same time. Remember that no text is written in the margins area. Usually, uh, it is a one inch by one inch margin. If you want to check your, um, your margins, you can click on layout, and you can click on margins to find out some common uh, margin settings. We're going to be using normal most of the time. The next thing that we want to look at is working with styles. If we go to the Home tab and click on Styles, uh, this is a really important thing to remember. Uh, styles give us headings and subheadings that we can use in our document. We're going to use these actually to create our table of contents. Let me, for example, um, I'm going to put here Heading 1, and I'm going to call it Planets. Okay. If I'm doing a huge report on the solar system, I want to make sure I have correct headings and so on. So I'm going to type in planets, and I'm going to copy in some example text again, and this is a brief description of the planets. The next thing that I'm going to look at is subheadings. So after planets, a subheading would be, for example, Earth. All right, And when I click below it, I'm going to actually put some, some subtext in there, Earth. Uh, my next planet would be, for example, uh, Mars, and I'll click on here, subheading to Mars, and some text. So when we use headings, uh, they are great for when we need to create a table of contents, and uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. The other thing in, in this uh, tab is citations. We're going to probably be using MMLA most of the time. But this is a great tool if we find information. We can click on this Add Citations button here. And imagine I'm working with uh, this document here. And I want to copy this link into my bibliography. I'm going to click Command-C. I'll go back to my Word document. And it is a website. And I'll put in um, all of the information that I hear, including the URL I just copied. Okay. So when we do bibliography, Let's use this works cited form that we find within Word. Um, another great feature of uh, this text box or this, this toolbox is um, working with copy-paste functions. All right. So instead of using Command C and Command C, that if I, if I find something and I want to use it uh, a lot, I can put it here in my scrapbook, and then I just simply click and drag it into my document as I need it. You can add uh, as much as you want to your scrapbook or as little. And you can also delete the options, uh, things that you don't want in your, in your scrapbook. So these three, uh, these three parts of this uh, document tab are really important to remember and how to use. Uh, I just want you to be aware of them. We'll be looking at how to use them effectively in class. The big one here is the Styles tab, and that'll give us a heading one, heading two, and so on. So those will be headings and subheadings. Again, we're going to use citations. We'll use uh, MLA most of the time. There may be a time when we'll try the APA. Generally, we'll be using the MLA style. All right, those are some of the basic functions that we'll be looking at this week and in this unit. Uh, we'll be practicing them today.